This is a beautiful world. Everything in the physical world is made of elements from the periodic table. And those elements combine with one another in endless amalgamations to create a vast array of molecules, which are the architecture, the building blocks of everything around you. Well, to explain molecules, you really have to start with elements and atoms. Science writer Theodore Gray, along with photographer Nick Mann, explores this grand story in his book Molecules, the elements and the architecture of everything. The Greeks were right, all matter is made of tiny, tiny little particles. Uh, we call them atoms. And the wonderful thing about atoms is that they can connect to each other. They can form bonds between each other. So, for example, if you take one atom called an oxygen atom and two atoms called hydrogen atoms and you connect them together, both hydrogens connected to the oxygen with a chemical bond between them, uh, that's called water. Gray goes on to explore the ocean of materials that molecules can create, including sugar and salt, rocks and sand, painkillers, perfumes and porcupines, cars, colors, and controversial compounds. Everything in our world is made of molecules. The entire richness of the world that we live in, all the material stuff, all the different kinds of things that we have, uh, you know, different materials, different foods, different, you know, living things, everything. It's all possible because of the many different ways in which elements can be connected to each other to form molecules. And, you know, depending on how you hook them up, you get anything from, you know, poison gas to a tasty, delicious, you know, asparagus or whatever. Um, this is all molecules. Gray shows us molecules as we've never seen them before, with vivid descriptions and intricate images of molecule structures. His fascination with the mysteries of the molecular world is contagious. One of the molecules Gray admires most is DNA. The machinery, the intricacy of the molecular machinery that makes DNA do its thing is just is mind-blowing in its complexity and its intricacy that is just so much more sophisticated than anything we've been able to build. When we see illustrations of molecules in textbooks, they're usually flat, lifeless, stick figure things. But in reality, molecules are three-dimensional entities that are always moving. Sound is created when it travels through the vibration of molecules. For instance, when a violin string is played, it vibrates, causing air molecules to move, and sound travels in waves across them. Gray also built an app as a companion for his book, which allows you to touch and play with molecule illustrations and see how they react. And when you, you know, touch it with your finger, you can grab the molecules or grab the atoms. You can touch individual atoms and pull on them with your finger. It's showing you how the molecule would actually respond if you did that. It bends, it flexes. You can take groups that are joined with a single bond that is able to rotate, and you can spin them, and you can see like they spin, and then they slow down, and that's realistic. That is interaction with the the other, you know, the sort of bath around them. You know, they bump off each other, they repel each other because they're by electrostatic repulsion, and yeah, you know, they're they're very live active thing. Theodore Gray on the tiny, beautiful world of molecules and his book, Molecules, the Elements and the Architecture of Everything. I'm Heather McElhatton, and this is a beautiful world. NPR News. Brought to you with help from the Pollard Family Foundation.